Oh yeah. Do I just hit record? Yep. Is it ready to go? Should be. Okay. Um, is it still open? Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. I believe that we are recording. Headphones, or if it's because you're outside, but it's giving us crackling here. All right, let's call this meeting to order. Uh, please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Commissioner Kirshner, do you have a prayer for us today? Uh, we're having technical difficulties with Mike's microphone. Can we have someone else say the prayer, please, while we work on that? Uh, yeah. You got it, Tony? Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for all the positive and all the good and all the uh, blessings that we all have. Uh, we are all tested at this time um, with the virus and some tough hardships. And uh, we know uh, through the core, we're, we are all part of a great community with a lot of good people. And uh, together we will um, get through this. Uh, we wanna, um, um, bless this meeting and, and all our decisions that, uh, and information that uh, we do the best, uh, that we are acting in the best interest of the community. And, and with that, uh, we pray. Amen. Yeah, we want to remember in our intentions, uh, Wes Farbuck, who is uh, one of our own, a county commissioner in Sandusky County and a long time uh, member of the community uh, around here. And uh, we lost him, unfortunately, uh, to COVID-related illness. And so uh, keep his family in your prayers as well. All right, uh, Nikki, roll call. Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Paradiso? Here. Commissioner Kirshner? It's kind of R2-D2 like. <laughs> All right, I will accept a minute, uh, a motion to approve the digital audio video recording of the previous board session from last Thursday. So moved and Commissioner Kirshner seconds. Roll call. Commissioner Kirshner. Commissioner Paradiso. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. All right, Stacy, do you want to do your administrator report now, or, or do you want us to go ahead and do our, you're not going to unmute yourself. Are you there? Yes. Jimmy's supposed to be taking care of me. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's lagging a lot, and I'm, I'm trying to get Mike to stop sounding like R2-D2. So. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I'll... Some good news is we did get sales tax in and uh, we are up uh, from last year. So that's good news. Probably the last time I'll get to say that about sales tax, but um, at least, you know, it looks like we were treading up. We were going to have a decent year. Um, mm -hmm. So, but that's a little bit of good news. Um, some bad news. Uh, we talked about at our last meeting about cutting 
you know, capital projects, uh, you know, no new contracts, no capital projects. We are having an issue with the uh, unit on the RTA that was on John's priority list for this year and um, he is having to go over and restart it at least, at least twice a week. Um, it's as old as the building is. So I do have a quote uh, for 11,640. Um, John's keeping it going as long as he can, but uh, it, it looks like that's gonna need to be replaced. Um, I do have another quote um, and obviously this one's kind of put, put back to the back burner, but you guys had asked me to get this when we were talking about um, uh, budgets is the painting of the barns out there. Um, I got three different quotes for um, 18,000, almost 10,000 and 8,000 for the two different barns and then the uh, uh, green bin out there. So I just want to put that on the back burner, but we're going to have to consider the uh, unit at the RTA building. I, I do want to say on the sales tax, just so everybody knows that we experience, it's essentially about a two and a half month lag on our collections. So, uh, you know, we have real time data of what the state sales tax was, and we know that was, was down about 8% in uh, March. And we, you know, obviously don't have line of sight to April at this point. So the sales tax information that Stacy's referring to are collections based on January uh, receipts, which include a little tail end of year end. So uh, there's a, a lag there. So I just don't want anybody to be confused. But the good news is we came into this uh, on a pretty roll. Well. I agree. Uh, Stacy, are you going to do your uh, presentation in the new business or old business? Uh, I can do it in old business. I thought we'd do. Okay. All you're right. Expecting, uh, you expecting someone to walk in at ten fifteen? It, yeah. If there's any more bids that come in, okay. um, we have bids so, to do at ten fifteen. Okay. Okay. Tony, commissioner report. Yeah, uh, a couple things. I uh, want to first start out by thanking um, all the electeds for um, their hard work. I, I want uh, the the public to know and the electeds to know that uh, uh, we really appreciate the cooperation and all of us working together in a timely fashion and uh, to get uh, some input from everybody and to get their plans together and how to approach it. I um, want to specifically thank the judges. You know, the, the Justice Center over there is, uh, is, is a busy place. There's a lot of moving parts and they were able to all get together and, and coordinate um, services and hours uh, to uh, serve the public, but yet, you know, save us some money. Um, so thank you there. We'll talk more about that, Stacy, in your report. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, National Machinery and uh, Andrew Cownow uh, for uh, what's now, um, uh, what's taking place. Uh, we got a call, all of us, a week ago that uh, Andrew had access to some uh, mask at the, to their contacts in China, their subsidiary, and um, wanted to know if uh, we would accept mask. Of course, the commissioners enthusiastically said, yes, please. Um, uh, this morning, I received a text from Andrew that the mask will be here as early as tomorrow and for sure early early next week. So they're in process, two to 3,000 masks. Um, and he's uh, I've notified John Spar. those will go directly to um, EMA and then John and Ken can circulate them out to our first responders throughout the county. And Andrew was very specific, uh, townships, EMS, uh, Tiffin, Faustoria. So 
we want to acknowledge that and appreciate that. There was uh, another shipment that, that arrived earlier. Those were de designated to uh, Mercy Hospital. So thank you, uh, National and Andrew, just another success story in our positive story coming out of our county of people, people stepping up. Um, also heard and verified with uh, John that uh, through the governor's report yesterday that um, our N95 mask in the county can now be refurbished and um, at no cost to the county. Uh, we're gathering these masks. We take them to the uh, State Highway Patrol in Bucyrus, then they run them to Columbus, uh, get them refurbished and bring them back. So that's all starting in the next day or so. Uh, so uh, that's positive. We're getting equipment and we're getting it refurbished, much needed. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Um, and then I want to just also comment on all the calls I made to, uh, these are non-elected, but these are service contracts throughout the county. Um, everyone was very um, understanding of the situation we're in. Everyone was very supportive in um, making cuts um, and uh, trying to work with us going forward. So I want to acknowledge that. These are, these are tough decisions. This isn't fun or easy, but uh, it's made a little better by the cooperation we're getting from everybody. And well, I appreciate that. That's all I have, uh, Shane, thanks. Yeah, um, and Arm and Hammer has been great also. They have donated stuff to EMA, uh, to Family and Children's First. So, you know, our corporate citizens are really stepping up you know they they frequently come in here and ask us for something but they're more than willing to give back so we have to remember all of those as well thank you uh mike do you want to try and go sure i, I just uh i'm concerned can you hear me okay now okay uh, my wonder and i've been asking the question is about test kit because it seems that uh, most things is getting as many test kits as possible I don't know if we can get ahead of the curve on this. I don't know what. Hey, Mike, it's it's coming in really quiet. We can't really hear you. Uh, can you try to disconnect the headphones and try without that? Sure. <clears throat> okay, is that any better? Yeah. A lot better. Okay, good. So uh, the test kits is, is uh, the question that I have. Uh, it seems as though when we are able to start talking about coming out of this and uh, approaching some some form of normal, uh, that uh, one of the keys will be being able to test as many people as possible. I don't know if there is a way, I, I know there is a way to uh, try to get ahead of that and get some of those ordered or to make that a priority, but I think that we ought to start considering what it is we need to do to get those in place. Uh, I'm told that our, we don't have many, uh, there seems to be all kinds of new uh, test kits out there that are that are that are quicker uh, and less invasive. So I'm not sure where the supply comes from there, but uh, maybe we ought to do some research and find that out. Good. Well, as advertised, my my niece, goddaughter Shelby Laturza, did make me a mask. So now I have, uh, I can get rid of my bandana and, and start wearing a proper uh, homemade mask. So I appreciate that and give her a shout out. Uh, there's still a lot of people making masks and it's in the thousands. So appreciate, I really appreciate that. And uh, the Red Cross is still uh, looking for blood donors. And in the spirit of that, Jimmy, you got it. Can you share your screen? Look at that. <laughs> that takes That's you right. back about 15 years ago. Mike hasn't aged at all. Hasn't aged a bit. <laughs> so uh, you're looking at a picture of my daughter, Christy, who is running a blood drive and Commissioner Kirshner, then president of Port Bank, donating blood. Uh, and so Great. we ran a couple of blood drives and, you know, Christy, uh, was a top uh, blood getter. I don't know. Is that a vampire? I don't know what that is. Uh, at her donations, the support of Old Fort Bank at, at that time. And 
Uh, and for that, she won the Clara Barton uh, Award for volunteerism at the Red Cross. And that, that was kind of uh, really cool. And so thinking about blood donation and thinking about Clara Barton, I, I started reading a little bit about her and thinking about her as we think about our nurses and frontline people who are dealing with COVID. And, you know, Clara Barton was a really interesting person. She was uh, someone who volunteered to be uh, a nurse at that time in the Civil War. And in fact, you know, a round went through her blouse and struck the guy next to her and killed her. And, and she proudly sported that blouse with the hole in it. Uh, so, um, you know, she went on to f found the American Red Cross in the United States following the model in uh, Europe that had come out of some of the wars in Italy of taking care of folks. And we know what the Red Cross is now. And I came across this quote from her and I thought it was appropriate for our time. Uh, you must never so much think as whether you like it or not, whether it is bearable or not. You must never think of anything except the need and how to meet it. So I thought that was appropriate for our time with a lot of nurses out there in the front line uh, taking a lot of uh, the brunt of this. And we certainly want them to be safe. And I appreciate everyone who's doing their part to socially distance and stay out of circulation. I know it's getting frustrating now and we're ready to be done with all of this. Uh, but uh, you know, it's an exercise in patience at this point. So uh, we want to get everybody up and running and healthy, uh, but it's going to take a minute. So I appreciate everybody's patience. It's, it's challenging. Very good, Shane. Thank you. All right. Uh, is it 1015 yet? It is right at that. Bit at opening. I'm going to check the front counter, Stacy, real quick, make sure there's nothing in there, and then uh, you go ahead and open the bids. Can you tell us what it is? This is for the 2020 Seneca County Chip Seal Project. Uh, and obviously, I won't have a sign-in sheet, but I think this thing will give me a list to put down on our sign-in sheet. How's life on the beach? <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yeah, the word sunny beach comes to mind today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, again the chip seal along County Road 3, County Road 12, County Road 21, County Road 28, County Road 29, County Road 38, 42, 51, 62 and 592. Uh, the engineer's estimate on this is 557,771. 557,771.00. Uh, the first bid I've received, I got, is uh, Henry Bergman Incorporated out of Genoa. Uh, their total bid amount is My second bid is Ward Construction out of Lipsick, Ohio. Total bid amount
Next bit I've got is Erie Blacktop Incorporated out of Sandusky, Ohio. Their total bid amount, $594,895.74. And the last one I have is from Unalliance Incorporated out of Oak Harbor, Ohio. Their bid amount is $529,298.99. Five two nine two nine eight point nine nine. And those are all I have. All right, so submit those to the engineer for review and he will pick the lowest and best bid. And I think it's worth noting as we talk about uh, austerity measures in the county that the uh, engineer's office has a separate funding stream and he has his own separate reserves there and you know he will manage those funds judiciously i'm sure and so we you know those are outside of the realm of the general fund so just so everybody's aware All right, uh, old business. Stacy, do you have some information for us? Yes, um, I still have some departments finalizing up some numbers, but I think I got totals uh, from most of them. Uh, the uh, veteran services, they're, they're, they don't meet until the 20th. Um, so I just put in their uh, percentages of what they what Tara was going to present hopefully they come back uh, at that uh, they said they were going to review that on the 20th um, Board of Elections I don't have anything in for them because unfortunately or fortunately um, their their costs are going to be up one with this whole COVID thing going on and then uh, obviously it's a presidential election year um, so with everything I've got in so far, a couple of numbers are going to be changing a little bit. Um, I've got 1.8 million back, well, proposed back, $1,859,263.74. So um, amazing job to everybody that's uh, turned in their numbers. Uh, they're working well, I think, uh, as far as I'm, I haven't seen the actual court order yet, um, but I was told the Justice Center will be shutting down on Fridays, um, the RTA building will be shutting down on Fridays, and our office will be shutting down, any office that can, um, that will be shutting down on Fridays um, in cooperation to help, you know, get, get our costs lowered. Um, I can go over any specific details, any numbers. I want to thank those that uh, have reached back out to us. I think as Tony started mentioning, uh, anybody that has contracts with us, you know, Highbridge, you know, they, they've agreed to do some work for us at actually no cost uh, to help us get through this. Um, Clean Team, the, the company, the Desert Justice Center, um, they're working with us, getting some new numbers, um, maybe a little less time spent in the building supplementing with um, our cleaners. Uh, Buckeye IT, uh, they reduced their uh, total budget amount. I've got to thank them for, you know, their wonderful work getting 
uh, a lot of these departments to be able to be working at home, um, you know, sending his guys out when absolutely necessary to get us fixed up. Uh, so I want to thank Jake and Buckeye IT, uh, regional planning. Uh, they met last night. Um, they have agreed to help us with, uh, with our assessments um, for the remainder of the year. TSEP sent in a proposal along with Fostoria. Um, I know Tony's still talking to OSU Extension, so all of our partners are working well. There's other offices that have reached out to their vendors as well. Um, Julie's reaching out to the uh, state auditor's office to see if they'll uh, cut us a little deal on our audit this year. So um, we'll see what she gets back from that. Um, I can go through any of the details if you'd like. Um, Just clarify for me uh, and everyone listening, the the 1.8 million that does not include some of the the agencies that haven't met yet and gotten back to us yes some of them yes so there's there's still some uh gain to be had there yeah yeah and we, one more thing I, I we probably need to add that if we were trying to get that two million dollar number uh, uh workers comp money coming back and the amount of seventy six thousand is not included in that either i assume correct are there any other um are there any other uh items on that side of the ledger uh, income that we didn't expect uh that will be coming through that that we can talk about at this point um, not not we might, uh, stace we might get some covid reimbursement right right yeah uh, we don't know what that is an income stream yeah, yeah. We encourage everybody to keep track of any and all hours, any and all supplies, any and all equipment, anything uh, related to COVID. You know, please keep a spreadsheet, track it somehow. The auditor's office have, has code set up into the VIP system that you could just, um, you know, code it through there. Uh, just make sure, you know, some people don't think of things that this is causing, so make sure you, you think outside the box and um, uh, try to code it, keep track of it. The only way we're going to be able to get reimbursed for it is if we track it and submit it. If we don't, you know, the chances are lower that, you know, we get as much back. I know EMA and EMS, uh, they're, they're on it definitely. They've already submitted some things, so um, please keep track. Well, I, I think it's important to know that there are some departments that we don't really, we can't really cut back at this point. Obviously, EMS is one of those, I, you know, because we need to continue with that service. But that when we do come up with the number, I mean, our number is about $2 million at this point uh, by virtue of the, uh, 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 the audit committee that, that, that put that number together for our new bogey. So if we can not only show what the cuts are, but also what uh, what other items go into that? And it sounds as though we are at, or maybe a bit above, the two million dollars um, with with that uh, with those calculations. Yeah. But of course, my express thanks to all those folks who have cooperated as well. And I think there's going to be some trickle down effects from like closing the buildings down, some unintended savings that we're we're going to see in um, you know the utilities. Because uh, right now we left um, our utility bills and our maintenance supervisors' lines uh, untouched, but we 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 assume we were going to get the savings. We assume there's going to be some savings. I just don't know how to quantify those yet, but there's going to be some savings there as well. Good. I know in uh, business, many people have uh, gotten relief with SBA loans. Uh, maybe six months worth of payments. A lot of banks have deferred payments, three, four, five months. Three is a good number. I know, Mike, you made a call, basically the county debt on the Justice Center. Uh, you might want to comment on that. Well, one of the questions was, could we get a deferral on our payment at the Justice Center? And, you know, and at 50000 a month with six months, that could have been a $300,000 savings but uh you might want to comment on that mike well there are actually two issues that i've been talking to representative reinecke about and also john larson our bond counsel the first you're right tony is uh 
there's a lot of, you know, under the CARES Act, there are some provisions for uh, business debt and personal debt to be deferred. There is no provision for municipal subdivision debt uh, to be handled. The problem with that is it really isn't a bank, it's a security that's been sold to people uh, in the public forum. So uh, it may be more difficult, but at least we're trying to do that. The other question was uh, private businesses uh, are getting some relief on their unemployment match uh, as people are unfortunately furloughed or laid off. And we're making an attempt to at least uh, bring that subject up at the state legislature because that is a Ohio state decision and not a federal decision. So there's ongoing conversation. I don't know if any of that will amount to uh, in the end any money, but there certainly is that conversation going on now. And hopefully we're setting ourselves up for the future in case this happens again to at least have everybody consider political subdivisions as well as the private sector. Good. All right, Stacy. thank you for all your hard work. Uh, I know this is a monster, so uh, we appreciate you. <laughs> we really I, do. I think all the uh, viewers should see her now, and then we should, Jimmy, pull the screen up from last week at this time and, and put a photo <laughs> next to now. I think you look a little more relaxed. I'm on the beach. And, yeah. and, and you also are at the beach, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, tough work, and this is a lot of scraping by a lot of people. So uh, I, I, you know, we we all appreciate it. All right, uh, new business. Business. Let's see. And here I have a couple uh, sub apps. I have one. Um, for the engineer's office, uh, hundred or forty-five thousand for additional funds for uh, upcoming projects and to their contract project lines. Again, that's forty-five thousand. Um, I have I have a couple of resolutions, but I need to do a sub app into our general fund transfers outline for one hundred and thirty-four dollars and sixty cents. Um, this is to be transferred to the HAVA, HAVA fund, the Helping America Vote Act fund. Uh, when they sent us a check, we had to create a fund, and the interest of that fund was uh, deposited into the general fund. So um, we need to move that. So I have a sub app for our transfers outline for and then I have a resolution authorizing the fund transfer be made to the Help America Vote Act fund um, out of our general fund to our uh, their transfers in line. I have a resolution setting time, date, and place to receive sealed bids for the Village of Bloomville sidewalk replacement project. This is set for uh, 10 a.m. on Thursday, May 14th at the commissioner's office. And this is one of our CDBG 2019 um, projects. Um, I have a resolution setting time, date, and place to receive sealed bids for the uh, proposals for the Seneca County Department of Job and Family Services. Um, this is set for uh, 10 a.m. on May 14th, 2020 here at our office. And this is for um, request for proposals for year-round um, youth program services and year-round TNF uh, program services. That's what the proposals are for. And then I have another uh, setting time, date, and place to receive sealed bids for the Seneca County Department of Job and Family Services for non-emergency transport services. Uh, this is again the same uh, 10 a.m. Thursday, May 14th, 2020 here at the Commissioner's Office, 111 Madison Street. And then I think that's all I have on the agenda. 
Okay, I'll accept a motion to approve the new business and we'll have a little discussion. So moved. Second. All right, discussion. Anything? I do want to point out that as we go, uh, you know, we're going to see capital projects come through uh, new business. And these are items that have previous grant funding, uh, other revenue, uh, uh, other revenues associated with them that uh, are going to continue to come through. So even though we have these austerity measures in place, uh, capital projects that were previously approved and state funded uh, are going to continue to move forward and that, that, that only makes sense. But I just want to point that out so that folks who are watching are saying, why are you doing sidewalks when you're cutting people? But uh, that's grant funding uh, through the state of Ohio, CDBG. Uh, yep, good point. All right, roll call, Nikki. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Okay, anything else, commissioners, you want to add uh, for the, the good of the, the body here? No, I, I just would like to say, Commissioner Thomas, that, you know, as aggressive as we have been trying to get ahead of the curve when it comes to the probable cliff, as we call it, uh, that's going to happen with sales tax and casino money, uh, I believe that's as quick as we need to be getting ahead of the curve when we think that things are starting to cook again. Uh, I wanted to assure all the staff that's out there, I, I have real empathy for uh, the cuts that we had to make, especially as it affects families, our bigger family uh, in the county, uh, and thank them for their sacrifice as well, because I know that it is a sacrifice, uh, but to assure them that as soon as possible, uh, that makes sense fiscally, uh, we will meet and project income that hopefully is going to be better, and to try to get those people back on staff and back on a regular 40-hour week. So. We are mindful of their plight, and we hope uh, God's with us and that uh, things come around sooner than later, and that we will do everything in our power uh, to bring uh, bring the county back up to full power. Jimmy, can you open it up for public comments? Uh, okay, so just from an administration standpoint, uh, we've unmuted everybody. And so if you have something to say, please feel free to, uh, to type in. And if you are still just in listen mode, go ahead and mute, and we won't pick up your background yet, please. So. Audrey, go ahead and lead us off. Uh, all right, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I'm glad you read my mind and knew I was going to say something. <laughs> um, so I am Audrey Flood. I'm from the Tiffin Seneca Economic Partnership um, and just wanted to give our kind of weekly update. We are continuing to um, assist businesses in any way possible that we can for what's going on in this crisis. Um, we currently are doing a uh, webinar series that is free to businesses. Um, the topic of the webinar that is this afternoon is social media and marketing um, and actually the county's own Jimmy Flint will be um, participating to give some input on that as well as um, several other uh, experts around uh, Seneca County and Tiffin on uh, marketing and social media. So um, that one is at 3.30. You can register for any of the upcoming webinars on our website or on our Facebook page. And you can also view a recording of any of the past webinars um, as well on, on uh, our website, our Facebook page. Um, we have had one with the health commissioner uh, on tips for sanitation. Um, we've had them on technology tools, um, various other topics. Upcoming, we have one on mental health in your business. Um, we have one specifically for rural and agriculture businesses. Uh, we have one tomorrow for financial resources with, and our local banks. Um, so, and again, they're all free. So just go to either our Facebook pages or our website to register for those and spread the word. Um, and if there are any topics that any of you or any businesses think would be helpful for us to go over, um, you know, an area that businesses could use some advice on, please let us know. We're happy to add more webinars. 
Um, and then as usual, just any questions about the financial resources that are out there or other ways that our organization can help, um, please reach out and let us know and we're happy to um, assist businesses in any way. Good job. Thank you. Anyone else? The host has unmuted all participants. You currently unmuted. Yeah, I'd like to say something if I could, Shane. Okay. Uh, this is Ken Majors, Emergency Services Director. I just want to say thanks to you guys, especially Stacy and the office staff, for keeping everything flowing and the information coming back and forth. As you might imagine, we're pretty busy out here. Um, John's taking the lead on the EMA portion of this, and he's doing a fantastic job and making sure we're getting all the uh, donations that we can get for PPE and we're uh, delivering it or distributing it the way that um, as soon as it comes in, we're getting rid of it. Uh, we're also taking quite a few more donations from corporations and also from uh, private donations, and we're getting that done. Um, on the EMS side of the house, all six of our squads have been in service 24 hours a day uh, throughout this crisis. A lot of that is because some of our volunteers are either furloughed or laid off from the regular jobs. But that benefits us by having all six of our squads in service and adequately manned right now. Um, I've met with those guys all the time and we've been doing follow-up information. Uh, and as Mike said, we are able to uh, send our masks down to Patel Laboratories to have them cleaned. We're working on a policy and procedure for that right now. There's a lot of changes and nobody likes change except a wet baby, but we're doing a lot of it. And um, everybody is taken in, in stride. And even though we have had some EMS crew members exposed to the virus, uh, we isolated and quarantined them and uh, testing came back negative for all of them. So um, we're doing our part and we appreciate the public doing their part by not calling the squad unless it's a true emergency. And um, I think uh, the way we do things will be changed in the future. Everybody's gonna be seeing like Shane said, wearing a mask pretty much everywhere we go for at least the short term coming. And uh, that's all I had. And uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, we appreciate you, Ken, and all your experience. Thank you. Anyone uh, else? Yeah. Ken? Yes, commi Commissioner, um, just, um, just wanted to um, reiterate. I uh, just wanted to reiterate uh, that I, I, hopefully you got that update that I um, sent um, as a follow-up letter to, uh, you know, as our operations at Sunny Farms Landfill continue to develop during the COVID-19. There were some questions on what type of material materials we are taking, and we just wanted to be very clear that. You know, we don't take anything hazardous, toxic, infectious, and we do not take medical waste. Um, and we wanted to make that clear. There was some question about that. So call me anytime with uh, questions or concerns. Thank you. Anyone else out there? The host has unmuted all participants. You currently unmuted. Uh, Lou Hurst from the Opportunity Center. Hello. I just want to say thank you and for your leadership during this challenging time. I really think we're blessed to live in a community that comes together, but it takes leaders to help pull that together and your leadership as commissioners have helped set the standard to help organize that. So on behalf of the Opportunity Center, I just want to say thanks. Thanks, Lou. We appreciate that. We, we really appreciate everything you're doing there. Ho hope you're holding up well and you're your clients are all hope, holding up well. If there's anything we can do, let us know. I appreciate that. Thanks, Lou. Hey, and we missed a celebrity basketball game, so that cannot be a casualty of this pandemic. We need to bring that back. No, we will have another date for it because it'll be a good way to pull the community together once it's safe for everybody. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Shane, it's Bryce. They'll give you a few more months to, uh, to work on your conditioning for basketball games, but uh, just want to say, uh, no. Okay. I've I've uh, it's good to see the 
So thank you. Hi, this is Kathy at Job and Family Services. And I just want to say thanks for uh, continuing to guide us and uh, uh, keep the services going. Uh, we continue to take a lot of applications and answer a lot of unemployment questions, uh, working with employers who are hiring and um, working on getting out PRC COVID payments, uh, which is um, keeping us busy as well. Uh, we continue to answer questions and be happy to answer any if you have questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Tony, you want to, you got something else? Yeah, I just want to uh, um, mention that uh, through these cuts, unfortunately, um, one of the decisions was to close the county museum. And um, we're trying to work through um, that. But at this point, um, the project in, in, to the rear of the museum, the carriage house project, uh, you mentioned earlier, that was uh, something that was pre-funded and in, and in the works. Uh, so that renovation will continue. Um, and, uh, but at this point in time, uh, and we'll have more information out there. We want to thank all the volunteers and all the people who have worked really so hard to get the museum in the place that it's at now. Uh, sincerely, we appreciate that. We want all of them to know, as well as the greater county, that, uh, you know, these are tough decisions, but we felt uh, as commissioners that, that we needed to make that decision given the circumstances. So just want to bring that to everybody's attention. Thanks. Anyone else out there that I missed? Okay. I don't see any other comments out there. Um, I think we'll go ahead and adjourn. Uh, Stacy, would you be willing to put up another Zoom so we can just have a brief staff meeting uh, after this? Sure. Okay. So seeing no other business, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.